All right, so this is called the black walnut. And the reason why I'm showing this to you is this is one of the few trees you absolutely don't want to compost or put in your garden. It has a compound in it called lanolin or something like that. There's a compound in there. I'll leave it in the links below. But when this compound gets into your soil, it eventually it will cause your plants to wilt. They get like a... Your, your vegetable plants will start to wilt from it. It's like they get like a disease, like a wilting disease. And that is because it contains this plant in it. So sometimes you might be thinking your tomato plants are dying from um, fusarium or verticillium. And it turns out to be basically black walnut in your compost because you bought compost from the store and they... They don't know any, they don't know the difference between a maple and oak and this thing. So they grind it all up together and then they give it to you. And next thing you know, your trees are, your garden is dying. And that's a similar effect you get to cherry trees, just so you know that. Cherry trees will actually cause a similar effect as far as uh, grinding it up and getting wood chips from that. And eventually they have compounds in them that will actually cause your plants to die off. Most of them anyway. So this is the black walnut. I just want to generally show you what it looks like. It, now, don't get me wrong. It's a beautiful tree to grow. Uh, the black walnuts are edible. They make these big green ball type things. This is too small for that. But they make these big green balls. And inside that ball, there's like a walnut type thing that's very hard. It's not like the English walnut. You can just crack with a nutcracker and you get your little English walnut out of there. Uh, these things you got to do a little cracking on them then you got to take out the meat from the center of it and then you got to process that meat in such a way and then after that's processed if I ever get it, enough of these black walnuts I will show you how to make walnuts black walnuts edible that's a future video I will show you that I'll link it back to this because this this video is just to show you what the plant and the tree looks like and kind of give you an identifying factor with it now this looks very much similar to the uh, staghorn sumac. And I have staghorn sumacs growing all over. Here's a staghorn sumac. You can see the leaf profile on it. Okay. It looks very similar to this plant, but there's a big difference in this plant when you're trying to identify it. Number one, the structure of the plant is, is kind of different, and it's not as fast-growing and as invasive as the staghorn sumac this one takes time to grow it this one's probably been here a couple of years that one was probably there only about a year year and a half and you can see how big that thing is so just to give you an idea uh, this plant is more or less more of a tree than it is a plant whereas the sumac is kind of a plant that turns into a tree this is this is a tree now when this tree gets big the wood can be actually used in furniture it's a very beautiful wood it's a very hard wood oh i think it's even harder than oak it's one of the hardest woods there are out there but it's the center of the tree makes this black wood and that black wood which the name hence black walnut gets its uh, name from that black wood in the middle is very is used for a lot of stuff like gun stocks and and um things like that not generally furniture but because the wood's so hard and it's so such a nice color you don't really even need to stain it it's just a great type of um wood to have and it it's it because of the i the high iodine content in this tree which has a very high iodine content it's one of the highest i think in the world even uh because of that reason it's very preserved it doesn't like want to break down so it's very your know, hard wood that lasts forever even in outdoor conditions all right, so in, in, in identifying this plant is, number one, you can see the difference. Uh, you can see how the leaf pattern looks. This is the whole leaf. I forgot what this leaf name was called when it's, when it's one stem that comes off as a leaf and there's multiple leaves on each stem. There's a name for that. I don't remember it, guys. It's not like this. A leaf, you have a stem and then the leaf comes off that. No, it's not, not that at all. This is a totally different thing. So if this leaf type... Uh, is different and you can see that it serrates on here which is very different from the sumac if you look at the sumac which I think I have one here the sumacs for the most part if you look at the sumacs each petal comes off of each side right next to each other 
generally. That's how they, the sumac grows. This one doesn't. This one staggers to some degree. So this one looks close together, but as this gets longer, it'll separate more. Like here, you can see it staggers. I believe that's the difference between that and sumac, but you can definitely see the difference in the leaf once you're looking at both of them. Uh, this one's got more of a leaf, a long, wide tree leaf type of a look, whereas the staghorn sumac is just, you know, it's very distinctive, you know, it's very, you know, narrow. And if you turn it over, the bottom side is like a blue color or, or white in color. If you turn this over and you look at the bottom of it, it's not white. It's got like a regular green bottom to it. So that's one of the ways you can tell the difference between this and the the other way you can identify the black walnut is by simply rubbing the leaf and smell your hands. It has a very chemically type smell. It smells like a stringent. It has a very distinctive smell to it. So you can basically uh, use that as a single identifier to find this plant. As long as if you can see this leaf type and you rub it and you smell it, you'll know that you have black walnut. Unfortunately, I don't have any flowers coming out it's just not big enough and I don't have any black walnuts but one of the way this one of the ways that this plant really gets itself around is because of squirrels and chipmunks and what they do is they get to that nut and they bury these nuts all over the place I mean this is why this plant is becoming an invasive species because because of the squirrels and the chipmunks they will take those nuts and they will bury them all over your property and these things will start popping up everywhere. And if you think you're going to pull one of these out by hand, you're kidding yourself. That nut puts out a really deep taproot and this plant is really hard to get rid of. This tree is a very hard tree to get rid of. You got to cut it down. You got to dig it out a couple years in a row. Uh, it's not easy and it gets very big. This gets as big as an oak tree like this. These 200 foot tall trees gets as big as those. All right, so I just wanted to share with you the black walnut. Uh, it does have a lot of uses for it. You can extract the iodine from these and, and uh, save the iodine and consume the iodine. You can dye your clothes with it. It stains your hands. It'll stain your clothes. Uh, the walnuts are edible, or the nuts inside of it are edible. And uh, there's other uses for this plant. I'll try to leave some information in the description below. You can look it up for yourself. And uh, it's a good plant to have. It's really, it's good on many terms. It's not a complete junk plant. It's not like a sumac tree really doesn't offer anything. It just takes up a lot of space. This one has a lot of uses, everything from furniture to edible nuts and medicinal uses for it in the event you need it. So it's a good plant to have. Recognize it when you see it. You may need it in the future. All right, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.